It's your Daily Dose of Donna, and today is Tuesday, April 4th, 4-4, So weird, I just remember it being 3-3-23. It's crazy how fast everything is going. It's 4-4-23, and we are officially one day away from the start of Passover. Did you guys know I'm Jewish? We're going to have a story around Judaism today in just a minute, but... Before I get started into today, I want to just share with you guys. Yesterday was not normal. Yesterday, I was a, a shell of myself. If you guys watched me over on YouTube or listened to the podcast, I was like literally not on any sleep. I, I don't even remember. You know how sometimes when you're so tired, you it's almost like you're on a drug or like on drugs. I look back at yesterday and I think to myself, I want to move this. My son moved that. Um, I look back to yesterday and I, I want to like, I feel like I was maybe on, you know, Percocet or like Propofol or maybe Ozempic. I don't know. I wasn't on any of them. I was just on no sleep and way too much tequila over the weekend. And let me just say, shout out to my friend Alexis. Every time I hang out with my friend Alexis, I just have to like prepare my liver. Like this girl is an, a tequila pusher. You know, she's one of those people where you're like at the pool in Palm Springs and she's like, oh my God, where's your tequila? I need to make you a cocktail. And next thing you know, you're drinking a gorgeous margarita and you're wondering, how did, how did I get here? How did I get here? But you know me, I like to imbibe in a cocktail or two or wine. I love my wine. So it all works out. But welcome, you guys. Welcome to the show. Uh, numbers for the podcast. And the only reason I share this, by the way, it's not a... Um, it's not only because I'm excited about it and I want to share all my wins, which by the way, like who wouldn't, but the numbers are so good, you guys on the podcast and then on the YouTube, it's just really, really awesome to see. And I have to shout out my upcoming free podcast. It's a private podcast called How to Grow Your Show with Video. Please, if you are interested in growing a podcast, starting a podcast, want to want to grow it, I am going to teach you all the tips and tricks. Just jump into the show notes or in my scan store, the link in my bio. If you're on Instagram, wherever you are, just jump in and sign up and you'll jump on the wait list. And like I said, absolutely free. Nothing to worry about. I'm going to read one review today because I am all about getting those Apple podcast reviews. And if you are right now listening and you're using your Apple podcast app, just go and scroll and then give it a five star and then just type in a little like, I love Donna. <laughs> this is a great podcast. Like just give me a little something, right? So this one is from RWNB20 and it says, Donna is a delight. Stumbled upon Donna while scouring YouTube for a scoop on the Heather Megan spat. This I think I'll stick around. Great to stick distraction. Distinction. <laughs> that would be awkward. Great distraction from this mean, cruel world. Listen, I will tell you what, a couple mean, cruel things. Not from me, like personally, but I will tell you. Um, I was joking yesterday on the podcast about how people are so annoyed on my YouTube my, by my, me calling Raquel Levis from the Vanderpump Rules Scandaval Rachel Raquel or Raquel Rachel. And so I had a little bit of a, a short that I put on YouTube about it. And I got a lot of comments like, call her whatever you want. You know, it's funny. A lot of people are like, don't listen to the haters. Don't read the comments. My husband always says, ghost, like post and ghost. But I love the comments I'm getting, especially in podcasting. You know, you usually don't get comments unless you're on YouTube. And I'm getting fantastic engagement on YouTube. So if you are watching this right now, I'm talking directly to you, leave a comment and just say hi, or just tell me a little bit about what you like about the show or a takeaway, and I will respond. I am obsessed with getting to know my YouTube family. And then, of course, I have a Facebook group called Daily Dose of Donna. I'll put the link below. And Instagram, my DMs. I'm always on the DMs. Hey, Jackie. Jackie's saying hi on TikTok Live. I always have, um, oh, you're in Massachusetts. So I am not in Massachusetts at all. I am in Los Angeles. Neil asked, where are you? So I'm in Los Angeles, which today, you know, I am also a weather reporter. If you watch the show, you know, it's not only, you know, pop culture and celeb gossip. I am also a, uh, you know, I was going to say Stormy Daniels. <laughs> I don't know why that would have come out today. I'm just seeing it all over the news that, you know, it's always like Jason Storm or like, Mount, mountain rains. Like what should my weather name be? I'm going to say it's going to be daily dose of vitamin D. 
That's my um, that's my weather name. Aw, thanks, Rolling Thunder. Okay, so we are going to get into a little bit of the show. First of all, yesterday I talked about all kinds of random things. I tried really hard. Whoa, just hit my desk really, really strongly and like I hurt myself. I tried really hard yesterday to catch up on Love is Blind. I don't know, have all the episodes aired? Don't tell me what happened but just let me know how all the episodes of Love is Blind aired. I watched about one and a half or almost two. I'm bored a little bit. I'm just going to be honest. Like I really liked the first four and I wish they would have just released all eight or all 10 or whatever at once. I don't know why they they split it up because I feel like that week between the first few episodes of Love is Blind and these episodes of Love is Blind, like I've moved on. I'm just like not that interested anymore. And I don't know what to do about this. I want to get back into like the obsession I was feeling week one, you know, that first binge. Let's talk about that really fast. Do we like binging shows or do we prefer watching week by week? A show that I talk about often is Fleischman is in Trouble. This is a show that was just recently on Hulu and we binged it, meaning we were watching two or three episodes two episodes a night, maybe one, depending on the time, but we were able to get through it in about a week or two. To me, I know that maybe that's not the best like money making for the, for the service. Cause the Netflix, the Hulu, they want to elongate your subscription. But personally, I find if I'm not able to binge, I am not going to be that into it. I'm going to move out, move on out. Right. And so when I was Watching Summer House, you know, yesterday I talked about how Summer House has jumped the shark. It's jumped the shark so much that I didn't even watch last last night's episode. And this is like my job. So I'm going to have to catch up on that as well today. Um, But Summer House, the reason why I love that show so much is because I watched like 15 episodes a week when I was catching up and and binging it. And I really think that there's like an amazing special thing about that. I don't know. I feel like it's really... um, it's, it's, it's a better experience. Okay. So I forget your name, CC Wick. I can't remember what your real name was. I can't wait with new episodes of Succession. So let, let me say this really fast about Succession. I am a Succession fanatic, love the show, but that's because I binge seasons one and two with my husband. And so when season three came, I was like really into it. Now there's been like that long break between season three, season four. We've just restarted season four. Y'all, I have a problem. I don't know if it's because we're watching on Sunday nights. I'm so tired. Oh, okay. It's Chris. Hey, Chris. I don't know what exactly it is, but I cannot, like, I'm not engaged. I'm not engaged with Succession this season, and I want to be. And I'm almost wondering, do I have to re-watch Succession, like, in the middle of the day, like, during lunch, and just, like, force myself to put my phone across the room because that's the problem. It's a little slow at moments and I'm looking at my phone. The second I look at my phone, it's over. Like I can look at my phone during Love is Blind, right? Because it's like BS. You can't look at your phone during a show like Succession because you've got to like, you've got to be in on that conversation. So I think I'm going to have to rewatch Succession, the first two episodes of season four again, because I want to be into it again. Like I want to be obsessed with it again, like I used to be, you know? Okay, finally, not finally. So we were talking about binging versus watching shows slowly. Love is Blind, I will keep going. Another show that is on my agenda to watch this, um, it's not a show, but it's a documentary. It's called Pretty Baby. It's the Brit- uh, Britney, hello, Britney Spears is on my mind and I'll tell you why. But it's the um, Brooke Shields documentary about life as a child actor and then growing up. And if you guys don't know this about me, I am a former casting director. I'm an award-winning casting director. So when I was just graduated college back in 2003, yeah, I graduated UC Santa Barbara and I went and I interned. My first job was an intern on a uh, on a TV show as a casting assistant or a casting intern. And then I became an assistant and then an associate and I moved up the ranks. So I was on That's So Raven. That was my first original show. I did a bunch of the Disney things and I discovered a bunch of Disney actors. Like I was, I had a part in discovering Zendaya and bringing Jenna Ortega to Disney and Debbie Ryan. And I mean, the list goes on. So many actors, right? Now that being said, I have this like weird thing about child actors. And when I finished, when I stopped casting, I was coaching child actors and I was having them, um, like when I started my business in 2017, 
I was having, you know, them work with me for their auditions, but I was also helping their parents kind of understand the business, like the, the show business. All I can say is this. There are great eggs and great apples in this, uh, eggs and apples, in this business. And there's some real, real bad ones, right? So we've got some great ones and then we've got some bad ones. And I have to say, if you are interested in getting your kid into the business of show and we're talking about, you know, Brooke Shields and I'm sure we're going to hear some crazy stories, you got to be careful there. And I talked about this before when I had a Cole Sprouse episode and I talked about, you know, being a child actor. I worked with Cole and Dylan. I worked on Sweet Life on deck for three years. And that was actually where I, um, hey, fans, that's actually where I got the the award, the best children's casting award at the Beverly Hills Hilton that year for that show. So I will say it, it comes down to the parents. And my guess is from seeing just a couple of the headlines that have come out with that Brooke Shield, my guess is that her mom was probably like not thinking the best for, like best intentions, right? Having her like, I guess, you know, pose naked or do all these things when she was really young. So I, it's on my agenda to watch Pretty Baby. Let me know in the comments below if you've watched it. Should I watch it? Is it worth it? This is a Brooke Shields documentary. Okay, another story that kind of jumped out at me that has nothing to do with Vanderpump, you guys, shocker, is um, Sophia Ritchie. So I actually spent, Sophia Ritchie is Nicole Ritchie's younger sister. And I think they just share the dad, Lionel Ritchie. And she's in her 20s and she is engaged to a man named Elliot Grange. And he is, I'm pulling it up. I wonder exactly if it says what he does. He's clearly Jewish. We know this. But, um, but she is, you know, ready to, or she just has converted. And this is the kind of cool story about this. Number one, I'm Jewish. I've talked about this many times. Jewish, born and raised and and my kids are raised Jewish and they go to a Jewish school like whatever but you know a lot of people feel this need to to convert to Judaism if their husband or if their wife their future spouse wants that for their lives it is a little important I will tell you a little bit about like Judaism um Oh, okay, so I just found Elliot Grange is the son of Universal Music Group chairman and CEO Lucien Grange, and he is a music executive. Okay, so he's a music executive. I will tell you just like this one little kind of funny thing. I spent the weekend, I was telling you about my friend over the weekend, Alexis. So her last name is Lamb, and um, – Sophia Ritchie said in her Instagram post, thank you, Cantor Lamb, Cantor Nathan Lamb. So my friend Alexis's father-in-law is a Cantor. Cantor Lamb is like the known Cantor in Los Angeles. Like he has been working for many, many years. Every single person was either bat mitzvah, bar mitzvah, or married by Cantor Lamb. So he's got like a very celebrity touch. And it's funny because I was spending the weekend with, with his, oh, a bug, um, his daughter, his daughter and his son over the weekend. But the reason why I think it's important for the for if you're a man, a Jewish man, and you're marrying a woman and she's not Jewish and you're planning on having children, because that is one thing about the Judea, Jew, Jewish culture. I don't know if you guys know this, that if you are a woman and you have, and you're Jewish and you have kids, it doesn't matter who the dad is, your kids are Jewish. Judaism goes through the mother's side. So for example, my husband and I are married. We're in our faith. He is not Jewish. And I didn't care if he converted or not, as long as he was cool with my parent, my my kids being raised with that Jewish culture. And you know, this is the week of Passover. We start tomorrow night. I don't know if you guys know anything about Passover, but it celebrates freedom. Have you heard of the song like "Let My People Go"? So it's um it's seven days, I believe, seven days of Passover. See, I'm a good, I'm a Jew, but I'm not a great Jew, right? Like I'm like a Jewish. I never had a bat mitzvah. Um, we're going to Israel this summer though. So I'll share all that later. I, I, I could go on a little bit of a tangent, but I just thought that was kind of cute to see that she, um, she converted and she did it with my friend's father-in-law helping her through it. So, okay. What else are we going to talk about today? I want to talk about a couple of things that I'm really over. Okay. I am insanely over anything Kardashian right now, and I don't know what to do. Now, this is something that we've heard before, right? Like, I I actually like the Kardashians. Like, this is a very polarizing topic, obviously. But I actually, you know, there's a part of Kim and Chloe and stuff that I really like. But when I see stories about Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny, 
No, it's maybe because I am not, maybe I'm like too old to be into Kendall Jenner. Maybe I'm too, this is how I feel, by the way, about Harry Styles and Emily, you know, Rada ja Emily. <laughs> Emrata. I'm just going to call her Emrata because I don't understand how to pronounce her last name. Am I too old for like obsession over Harry Styles and Emrata? Am I too old to care about Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny? Is this what it is? Are there older women out there or men that are really interested in these stories? Like, I want to know how old you are and do you care about it? Because I like a lot of these stories, right? Like, I'm like really into, you know, celeb gossip and <laughs> Atlantic Cherry says Harry Styles can be your son. Oh, he sure can. I'm just not interested. Like the whole... um don't worry, darling story with Olivia Wilde, that did bring it in a little bit more to like my cup of tea. I kind of was into that, but I wasn't like so into, I'm not into Harry Styles just like on his own, right? It's social media culture, so everyone is exposed. Interesting. Yeah, we kind of can't get away from it. I'm just like, you know, what I, what I find is, um, Oh my God, right now, you guys, as I'm recording this, I just went on Daily Mail just because I wanted to pull something up and it says Trump faces New York City judge over Stormy Daniels hush money payments. We knew this. He was going to be, uh, you know, um, indicted today. And it says he's become first US president to ever be charged with a crime. He's booked, fingerprinted, and says, I can't believe this is happening in America. Holy moly. There's mayhem outside. I am happy I am not in New York City. We're not going to get into politics on this show, but that's just like a pretty crazy thing to go live during, right? Um, okay. So, yeah. So, I go on like Daily Mail and the first story is Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny. Okay, cool. So, they're on a horse together. Let them. Enjoy. I'm sure people out there are really into it. I just don't really care as much. Now, the story about Katy Perry, and then I'm going to wrap this up. The story about Katy Perry and American Idol. Let's talk about that for just two minutes. Okay, two minutes, and then we're going to move on. Apparently, Katy Perry mom shamed this one girl, Sarah Beth Lieb. I hope I'm saying her name right. It could be Lieb, but it looks like Lieb. And basically what happened was apparently she was mom shamed because she shocked the judges. Sarah Beth on the March 5th episode shocked the judges when she revealed that she had given birth to three children before age 25. And Katy Perry, who's a mother as well, said, probably as a joke, that you had been, you're laying on the table too much. Okay. Number one, we're too sensitive as a whole. I think like when I read this, I'm like, this is a mother. Katy Perry is not mom shaming. She's a mother and she is not, uh, you know, trying to make this, this girl feel bad for being a mother. I, I just don't understand why it's turned into this like mom shaming comment. Now, she ended up deciding to leave. She decided she she was going to leave because she wants to be with her babies during, um, she says, you know, my babies need me. And like, that's a different story now. But all I can say is this, whether, I, and I'm curious, do you guys think, do you guys think she was mom shamed? I don't know. I, I, I personally don't feel that way. And I think that some people just like to be kind of funny. And like to make kind of like just like fun little, you know, off the cuff remarks. I wonder, did the did the um, American Idol editors do Katy Perry wrong by leaving that in the show? Now, Katy Perry still has her mama hat on today as she's walking around Montecito. She's a mom. She's a proud mom. I'm going to I'm going to call this one like too sensitive, too sensitive for words. Don't you guys agree? All right. Well, listen, it's Tuesday today. Tomorrow's VPR day. It's going to be Passover and then straight into VPR. I'm still going to be here every day because I'm still working. Thank you so much for the support. If you are not already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at This Is Donna Bowling. Also on TikTok at This Is Donna Bowling. D A N A. I know. D A N A. It's like a whole story. Donna spelled Dana. Make sure. Um, Oh, Heather Recovers says on TikTok, I don't think she was mom shaming. It's totally taken out of context, but the poor girl has mom guilt. Yes, because she has three young kids. Like, who doesn't have mom guilt? But also she should have stayed because, like, having success could give the kids such a good life. And I truly believe kids can handle life without their parents for a little bit for work. I'm also someone that doesn't have mom guilt about working. Ever. Ever. Um, I mean, I miss them. 
But I think that's like a different story, right? Like having mom guilt and missing. But they are my kids are also older and they don't need me as much. Okay, back to the wrap up. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, commenting, all of that good stuff, you guys. It means the world to me. My business is growing because of the support from you guys. And this is the best and most fun I've ever had in my 41 years with my work. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you want more of this, make sure to stick around. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you guys. Um, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Happy Tuesday. Thank you.